Hello my friends, welcome to my corner. You know what this is, I don't need to tell you, it's pretty much self-explanatory. We are going to do a book haul. So let me show you what books have accumulated in the past few months, actually. As always, I'm going to follow a random order, as you can see. We are going to begin with this classic by Robert Louis Stevenson, Kidnapped. And let me tell you, the first books that I'm going to show you here, and actually most of them, come from library sales. So that means that these books were 50 cents, the paperbacks, and uh, sometimes maybe one dollar, the uh, hardcover books. But anyway, this is the kind of book that you can read online, you can get it for free. But I really like uh, Robert Louis Stevenson, I love his style, and this is one book by him that I have not read. Actually, I'll be honest with you, I have read most of his short stories, but I have not read Treasure Island, for example, in its original version, or Kidnapped. So I wanted to get a copy of this to, in, in a way, kind of force myself to read it. Then I have here a book that I had seen before uh, one time many years ago when I was browsing at uh, Barnes & Noble and this is by Francine Prose. It's titled Reading Like a Writer, A Guide for People Who Love Books and for Those Who Want to Write Them. So I was just uh, looking at this book many years ago as I said and I really liked the contents and I was like this is one book that I would like to read someday so I found it today at this library sale. So I was really happy about that and I decided to get it. Now the next one is, um, I have said this before, I have this thing where I feel that when pretty much everybody is reading a book, I, I try not to read it because I feel bad about reading some, but something that everybody else is reading. But with this book, I was like, you know, there are so many people that I know who absolutely love this book and who have talked about it, many of them in the booktube community, that I'm just going to tear up that rule and I'm going to get a copy of that book and one of these days I am going to read it. I may comment on it, I may not, but I will read it. And I, I am talking about Stoner by John Williams, okay? So uh, here it is, I have a copy, I will read it one of these days, I don't know when, so there it is. I found also in the um, religion section, th these could be uh, you know put in, in other sections too, a couple of books by Henry Nouwen, whom I, I really admire. Uh, his book on the return of the prodigal son is one of my favorite books. It's uh, just a, an amazing work, not only for religion and insp inspiration, but also for how to read a painting, for example, and how to interpret art. So I found this one titled Intimacy, and the subtitle of this is Essays in Pastoral Psychology. And then the other one that they had, I'm pretty sure that I have a copy of this in Spanish, or rather my, my mother does, but I still wanted to get it and to read it in English, and it's titled reaching out and in this case what we have is the three mov movements of the spiritual life so no one usually likes to divide his books into three parts so he does that in this book also and uh, for example the first part is titled reaching out to our innermost self the first movement from loneliness to solitude then the second part is reaching out to our fellow human beings the second movement from hostility to hospitality and then finally we have reaching out to our god the third movement from illusion to prayer so i thought this would be very interesting and i have read several books by henry nowen so i can always add another one then they had this hardcover uh book that I thought I would like to check out. It's basically about filmmakers, film directors, talking about the art of filmmaking and its different aspects. So you have directing the film, film directors on their art by Eric Sherman. And they talk about all sorts of aspects of the filmmaking process. You know, I have a title here titled Visuals and Camera Work, uh, Directing Actors on the Set, first principles, shooting methods, stuff like that, right? And you get everything from Roger Corman to, um, you know, um, Alfred Hitchcock and Robert Altman, Federico Fellini, Roman Polanski, and all of those masters of filmmaking. So I was like, this would be a really good thing because I like to write film criticism. So sometimes, you know, it's good to get quotes from the filmmakers themselves. That always helps. This, the next thing that I'm going to show you, I didn't get at a library sale, but at Half Price Books. These are three volumes of the collected works of E.T.A. Hoffman. And they had them at a very affordable price. And I was like, okay, yes, I cannot read German, but maybe someday I will. And, and it's just very nice to have this collection right there. What I did was, uh, after I bought them, I went online and I, I was trying to see how many volumes the total, the complete collection was. And it turns out that I am missing one volume, which is volume four. But the others, which have his most important work, are, are here. 
So, you know, they have uh, The Sandman, for example, and uh, Tomcat, Murr, and all of those great stories that Hoffman wrote. So hopefully, you know, maybe one day I will be able to read in German. So I'm uh, looking forward to that. I found a book by Roland Barthes titled A Lover's Discourse. It has uh, fragments, so his meditations on uh, this topic of love right here, which is really interesting to me uh, from the, not only, you know, from the practical perspective, but also from the um, theoretical perspective, if you will. And he quotes all sorts of authors. I see Lacan here, uh, Freud, uh, Verlaine, you know, just uh, all sorts of authors that um, he likes to, um, you know, bring into the into the discussion. So I, I always, you know, enjoy the prospect of reading something by Barth. And uh, this is another thing that I had, you know, a book that I had not heard of and that I thought would be um, really nice. Then uh, here I have a book by uh, Levin titled The Stepford Wives, which... Estoy haciendo un video. Okay, I got something. Look at this. Okay, amazing. So uh, this, this thing just arrived. Um, oh, okay, okay, okay. So this is from the wonderful city of Mella in uh, Germany. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Look at this. Amazing. Here we go. It has actually a really, really easy thing to, when it comes to opening it, you know, sometimes here it's very difficult, but this one is not. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Look at this. Wonderful book, what we have here, okay? We have Yume Toimen in Tokyo, okay? This is a, an excellent, excellent book, and it's a story about twins, which is uh, one of my favorite topics. I don't really know why, maybe because I associate twins with a kind of a doppelganger story, but it is also about dreams, okay? Uh, once again, I cannot read German, but I will find a way to read this book. It's a book about dreams, as I said, and uh, the idea is that there's a... German man who goes to Tokyo because his brother has just had an accident and he is in a coma. But uh, this brother and his wife were ne neuroscientists, okay, and they found a way to uh, maybe read what the, what the brain is saying. So that would be a way to communicate with this guy who is uh, in a coma. So here it is, you know, this may well be the first book that I'm going to read in German. So uh, I'll share my experiences with that uh, with you. So as I was saying, um, I have this book the Stepford Wives, which is, of course, based on the... It's the book that the movie is based on. And I love the movie. That's one of my favorite movies. I don't know why, but most of the people that I meet are not as enthusiastic about the movie The Stepford Wives. And, of course, I'm talking about the original one, okay, the one from the 1970s, as I am. Uh, I read the... This is a novella, actually, not a novel. Uh, I read it many years ago, and I really liked it, and I always was like, you know, I would like to have a copy because I had gotten it from the library. And at Half Price Books, I found this hardcover copy, so I was uh, really thrilled to add that to my collection. Then I have this little uh, paperback. It's Edith, Edith Wharton's Summer, okay, which is a novel that I had not heard about, but I saw it in a video by my friend Katya. She recommended it, and I was like, you know, it sounds like a good excuse to read Edith Wharton finally, because I have many of her books, but I have never read her. So uh, this is another book that I, I look forward to reading. There are many books sometimes that I have read because I got a copy from the library, but I do not necessarily have a copy but I always tell myself, you know, that's a book that you should have a copy of, okay? One of them is one of the most amazing novels I have ever read, which is, of course, The English Patient, okay? And I found it, it was on, you know, clearance, and I was like, okay, here it is. Uh, and yes, uh, here I um, broke my rule again. I got a book that has the movie cover or things from the movie in the cover, you know, which I, I like to avoid, but sometimes, you know, I break those rules. I have not read the uh, Sea of Fertility Tetralogy by Yukio Mishima, but I have the first book and now I also have the last one, which is The Decay of the Angel. I just need to find the second volume, the third volume, and then of course I need to read them. So that's in my future. Another movie that I really enjoyed and that I consider to be one of my favorite movies also, you know, uh, another example of a movie that most of the people I know are not so enthusiastic about is Ordinary People. And I always wondered what the novel is like. So, Clearance book, I got a copy. I want to read it before I watch the movie again, 
to see uh, what the differences are. As you know, I'm interested in the process of adaptation, so that would be cool to look at the adaptation and then, uh, you know, at the uh, book and then to watch the movie again. And you also know that I am interested in the Nobel Prize for Literature. Another book that I read many years ago, I can show you the, uh, the title, I don't know if you'll be able to read it, but uh, I read this book in Spanish, Quo Vadis by Sienkiewicz, and it's a book that I read while I uh, was in Singapore uh, many years ago. This was back in 2016, so you do the math because I'm not very good at math. And I was reading Quo Vadis. It was my only experience of Sienkiewicz's work. And also, you know, at a library sale, they had this hardcover version in English of Quo Vadis. And I was like, you know, why not? Maybe I can reread it in English someday because it's a really good historical novel, just very well written. And the story itself is just compelling. So I recommend it to you if you like historical novels. This, I think I got, uh, the, yeah, this was from Half Price Books. I'm a big fan of Alejo Carpentier, the Cuban author who has just one of the most beautiful styles in the Spanish language. This is not one of his masterpieces. It's El Acoso, The Chase. That's the title it had in English, but it's a very brief text. Uh, I hesitate to call it a novella because I would really like to reread it and then I would be able, able to tell you about that. Uh, as I have said before, the novella, the novel, the novella really has nothing to do with the number of pages. It's a factor, definitely, but it has to do with the structure. So that's why I cannot just look at it and tell you, yes, this is a novella. But I remember reading it many years ago. I remember liking it, but that's all that I remember. So maybe it's something that I would like to re-experience one of these days. And the same thing goes for one of the few books that I was missing by Juan Carlos Onetti, which is Cuando Entonces. This is very slim. It's, it's just, uh, let me tell you exactly, 78 pages long, okay? So it's one of his novellas. This is a novella from his late period. And the funny thing about this one is that I was browsing the books at Half Price Books and this one did not have a price sticker. I was like, wow, that is fantastic. Usually, you know, back in the day when that happened, you sometimes went to the cash register and they looked at it and they told you, uh, $3. Now it's not like that anymore, unfortunately. So the person looked it up in the computer and they charged me $9.99. But that was still very good because there was a sale going on, a 20% off sale. And I looked it up online and if I had ordered it online, plus the shipping and plus the tax and all that kind of stuff, it would have ended up being like $15. So I was still really happy to get this. Plus it's one of the few books by um, Onetti that I am missing. Also from a library sale, so this must have been about a dollar, a Spanish edition of Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert, of course. I read this in English, but you know, I would like to read it in Spanish. I would eventually like to read it in French, but I, I don't feel that I'm quite there yet with, with my French. So I'm waiting a little bit on that to, to enjoy it a little bit more. And another thing that you know that I am very enthusiastic about is, of course, the 1001 Nights. And I got this edition of the, I believe this is the Andrew Lang uh, translation. It's, of course, a selection of stories from the 1001 Nights, and it has um, illustrations that I really liked, that I thought were really cool. And I like the idea of a selection because if I ever reread the 1001 Nights or stories from it, it's probably not going to be the whole thing. It's more likely going to be a selection of stories. So here I have, you know, some ideas on what stories to revisit. They also had same library sale, R.K. Narayan's The Painter of Signs. I was attracted to this because I have not read anything by R.K. Narayan yet. I have a copy of the guide, but I still need to read it. And this one is really, really short, so I, I like that. I like manageable texts. I'll read, you know, very long texts, and I'm actually going to show you one of those in a, a couple of minutes. But if it's short, you know, I, I, there's, you know, plenty of time to read it. So that's wonderful. This one, I looked at the title, and I, I just had to get this because I am interested in photography, and there will be more to come about this in future videos. Of course, at the amateur level. Okay, I have never taken a photography class or anything like that, but I just like to take pictures of things and put things in a frame, you know, and, and things like that. So this is titled, Read This If You Want to Take Great Photographs by Henry Carroll. So I was like, you know, it's, it's always good. I, I have looked at some courses of photography on DVD and things like that and read books about it. So it's more knowledge when it comes to making that decision, you know, when are you going to take that picture? You know, what are you going to put 
in that frame? What are you going to leave out? They also had a couple of books on uh, the German language that I thought were really cool and maybe a good way to get started with that process of learning another language. This one, the green one, is titled German Verbs and Essentials of Grammar. And then the other one that I have here is the Key to German Grammar. These were obviously part of lo longer works or uh, packets of other books and stuff, but they still have great vocabulary and great ideas when it comes to grammar. And some of them even have pictures, which is, as you know, uh, very easy or easier at least to learn languages when you can see the pictures. This is something that I had not heard about, but I found it to be very interesting. It's Edward T. Hall's The Hidden Dimension, and it's about the science of proxemics. Okay, uh, It says here, let me just read you this so you have an idea what this is. People like to keep certain distances between themselves and other people or things. And this invisible bubble of space that constitutes each, each person's territory is one of the key dimensions of modern society. Edward T. Hall, author of The Silent Language, introduces the science of proxemics to demonstrate how man's use of space can affect personal and business relations, cross-cultural interactions, architecture, city planning, and urban renewal. So I was like, I mean, I, I was interested immediately and I thought, you know, this would be a good book to explore. I also found a copy of Willa Cather's Death Comes for the Archbishop. There is one novel by Willa Cather that I have read. It was back in college. It was uh, one of those assigned readings titled The Professor's House. Highly recommended. Oh, I, now I remember. I read something else by Willa Cather. I want to say Alexander's Bridge. Don't, don't take my word on it. I'll correct that if, it, if it's wrong. I'll let you know. I'll put a message here or something like that. Alexander's Bridge. It's a novella and it kind of prefigures The Great Gatsby. So, you know, just uh, just saying, that's a very good book also, The Professor's House. I really enjoyed that too. But as you can see, none of those books are her most famous ones, right? It's not My Antonia or Death Comes for the Archbishop. So this is a book that I would like to read. Um, the Black Seal and Other Stories by Arthur Machen. This is good because it brings together a few of his stories. Let me see, it has seven of them, and it does include the great god Pan, okay, and the white people. So I was primarily interested in the Shining Pyramid. So that one is included here, and uh, I just wanted to have a copy of something by Machen because what I have read by him was on Kindle in one of those free editions because this is in the public domain and stuff like that. So I really wanted to have uh, something by this author. Um, some time ago, a friend of mine recommended this book to me by Robert Graves and Alan Hodge, titled The Reader Over Your Shoulder. And um, the subtitle or subheading here says, A Handbook for Writers of English Prose. It's really about how to write well, okay? And uh, I went to a library. They have this little kind of a bookstore kind of place. It's not really a bookstore because when you buy these books at the library, what you're doing is actually making a donation. They cannot really sell books officially uh, so it's more like a donation and I found this and I was like wow my, my friend had just mentioned this you know one of those those moments of serendipity or, or synchronicity or whatever you want to call it but uh, the thing is I later realized that it says here this is the second edition and it says revised and abridged by the authors so it's not the complete thing but it still gives you a lot of information and one thing that it does is it may give you like a passage from a famous author like Dickens, you know, like T.S. Eliot or Bernard Shaw or any of those people. And then it shows you how you could actually improve those passages, which I think is really good because it shows you that even the writing of famous authors can be quote unquote improved. The process of editing is just never over, you know. The Mexican author Alfonso Reyes actually said that writers got their works published so that they would stop messing with them, you know, because that's one way of saying, okay, it's published, so I can forget about it. Because otherwise, as you know, you can keep editing and editing until, you know, the basically the, the end of time. Then I have something that you have heard about, um, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, 100 Years of Solitude, the English copy. I got this at the same little library bookstore, quote-unquote, that I got the Robert 
Graves book. And uh, some people ask me, you know, Jorge, you, you can read Spanish, right? Uh, 100 years of solitude, Cien Años de Soledad, you have to read that in the original. And I would say, uh, precisely because I can read Spanish, is be one of the reasons why I am attracted to these translations, because I know the original, I have read it. So now I would like to look at this other type of art, which is translation, right? I know it's, it's commonplace to uh, deride translation and to criticize translators and, and to sometimes even to insult them. But I think this is really an art form. It's a very difficult art form that, that takes guts, if you ask me, you know, to put your name right next to or, or below the name of an author, of a famous author, like Gar Garcia Marquez or like anybody else that, that has that kind of a you know an impact on word letters so I really would like to read 100 years of solitude in English now that I have read it in Spanish and that I know the text so that's one of the reasons why I got this one uh, the next thing I have is repetition and philosophical crumbs by Kierkegaard I have said before that Kierkegaard is one of my favorite philosophers and I read somewhere somebody said this right that repetition was as close as Kierkegaard came to writing a novel or a novella so I thought you know that's one to experience and last but not least this is the big book that I was going to tell you about that, that I said before uh, I did not have a copy of the Lord of the Rings okay mea culpa I needed to have a copy of that and and I'll say more I have not read it I've shared that before with you and that is kind of shameful I uh, was aware or became let's put it this way I became a reader seriously if I can say that when the movies came out so basically everybody was just running to, to read the Lord of the Rings and as I have told you before that's something that you know when I see everybody reading a book I, I just don't feel that desire to read it anymore but I finally told myself you know Jorge just you know this I got it at the library it was like one dollar probably or 50 cents I can't remember but I thought okay it's there come on just get a copy and make a point of reading that someday soon okay because it's just necessary it's good for your soul and that's what I did so now I have a copy of the Lord of the Rings and uh, I am going to read it one of these, day these days so uh, that's what I have in terms of this uh, book haul I hope you enjoyed it and please let me know if there are any authors here who you have read and what your impressions are about them if you have any recommendations of other books by them or just other books by anybody you know that I'm always happy to hear about that or any comments questions recommendations recipes confessions prophecies and anything that you may have so thank you so much for stopping by and have a wonderful day